From the High Definition Studios at Fox Charlotte's, this is Fox News at 10. Parents and educators trying to make sure minority students have a better chance to succeed. Thanks for joining us. I'm Israel Balderas. And I'm Morgan Fogarty. Hundreds turned out tonight to learn how to get cash to start minority-led charter schools. Fox Charlotte's Adrena Vegas talks to state leaders about how they're helping. Minority educators and business leaders say it's a rare opportunity to provide higher quality education to black students. Two organizations, Parents for Educational Freedom and Partners for Developing Futures, are offering funding to open charter schools. Governor Bev Perdue made this possible by eliminating the charter cap this summer. Lifting the charter school cap gives um, African American leaders the opportunity to open a school of their choice, which are charter schools, to provide distinct and different type of uh, education offerings. Hundreds interested in starting a school packed an auditorium at Johnson C. Smith University. But the information session is just the first step. In so many cases, how you begin is how you end. And in North Carolina, we've had 33 charter schools that have shut down since 1996. And the primary reason is startup, administrative costs, strategic planning, board governance. Organizers of tonight's event say the need for charter schools is greater than ever. There are 100 in North Carolina, but still over 30,000 families are on waiting lists. Senator Graham says this time around, failure is not an option. One goal, reducing the 30% achievement gap on math and reading end of grade tests. We believe that that will help us uh, begin to, to, to shorten up that achievement gap so more of our children of color are doing better going to college, graduating from college, and becoming better citizens in our state. Allison says that can only happen if more minorities step up. Right now, only 30% of the educators leading North Carolina charter schools are black. Audrina Vegas, Fox News. Minorities interested in starting a charter school have to submit a letter of intent by October 15th. The selection process could take up to nine months. Watching Carolina's News Channel 36 with Sonia Gant, Dave Wagner, the First Warren Storm Team's Brad Panovich, and Sports with Greg Bailey. You know, starting a new charter school can seem pretty far-fetched in this economy. But tonight, hundreds gathered at Johnson C. Smith University to learn how to get started. This effort is through a project created by Partners for Developing Futures and the Parents for Educational Freedom Group. Right now, money to start a new school is scarce, but it's not impossible to find. But you have to be mindful of the resources. And when you're targeting uh, communities that need public charter schools the most, whether it be urban or rural, and there's a lack of resources there. Uh, critical dollars, uh, such as what Partners for Developing Future provides, are wonderful opportunities. Now, back in June, Governor Bev Perdue signed a measure eliminating a cap on charter schools, creating opportunity for more to address academic and social needs in different communities. From the news team covering the Carolinas, live, local, late breaking, this is Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 6. Right now in West Charlotte, there's a big push for new charter schools. The governor just lifted a cap on charter schools, and that means more of them could be coming to our area. Well, hundreds of people are meeting at Johnson C. Smith University now to learn how the schools could help in minority neighborhoods. Eyewitness News reporter Alan Cavana just spoke to the event's organizers. Alan? Well, Erica, he says that this meeting is about learning about what opportunities are out there to start charter schools. They're actually expecting about 400 people here tonight at Johnson C. Smith. This is the fourth meeting of its kind around the state. Charter schools, of course, offer an alternative to regular public education schools. They offer smaller schools generally, which means smaller classes as well. And while they are publicly funded, it often takes private money to get them started. And it's money that will be addressed at tonight's meeting, finding funding opportunities to get charter schools off the ground. We believe there's a real opportunity to start, start schools in rural uh, counties as well as urban counties. More importantly, we want to make sure that we have talented, motivated uh, people. And Allison says the state has about 100 charter schools right now, but he says over the last decade, dozens have closed because of funding issues. We're live in West Charlotte, Alan Kavana, Channel 9, Eyewitness News. Now, North Carolina charter schools scored a major victory in court today. The state court of appeals ruled that a school district cannot put money in a special expense fund to try to keep it away from charter schools. As a result, a Rutherford County charter school will receive more than $700,000 that it should have received over the past three years. This is your morning news on News 14 Carolina. 
Hundreds of people who want to open new charter schools attended a meeting last night at Johnson C. Smith University. It was the last of a series of statewide meetings hosted by the Partner for Developing Futures and the Parents for Educational Freedom Group. The meetings were designed to link people interested in creating public charters with funding sources. But you have to be mindful of the resources. And when you're targeting uh, communities that need public charter schools the most, whether it be urban or rural, and there's a lack of resources there, uh, critical dollars uh, such as what Partners for Developing Future provides are wonderful opportunities. In June, Governor Purdue signed a measure that eliminated the cap on charter schools.